I've had some injuries and it just got to the point where I couldn't keep up with some of the harder hitters. So archery is a little more laid back. You can stand in the back and shoot from afar and there's less chance of getting injured. I'm Lady Cheryl Ravenlock and uh, I've been doing this for about seven years now. My brother brought, brought Wrath to Boise. I was knighted in 2008. Uh, I spent a two and a half year process learning from an older knight um, everything I could about the sport and, and I went through a series of challenges, uh, combative, non-combative, and, and just learned um, how to marshal, which is our referee system, learned how to make every single kind of weapon, how to sew my own clothing, and at the end of that journey, um, it, it, you know, it affected me in and out of the sport. We meet for practice every Wednesday in this park. We get started around 5 o'clock and go till we run out of light. We host one event where we bring people in from out of state, come to, uh, basically have a big party, camp out overnight. There's an estimated 28,000 of us in the nation that have been run for 20 years or more, um, the same time every year. So, I mean, it's just like the Super Bowl. Um, we out here have our own Super Bowl. It's called Chaos Wars. Um, it's a week-long national tournament. So I don't know what our total membership numbers are, but some of the bigger events will have 500 plus. We have, we have several different categories of rules. For the actual weapons, there's in uh, what we call the Book of War, and it has the schematics for every weapon type. So it tells you exactly how to build everything to safety specifications. And we have marshals on the field who usually wear a yellow tabard like this. And they're in charge of checking everyone's weapons at least once a year, more often if it seems needed to make sure that none of the core of the weapon, which is usually kite spar, fiberglass, or a PVC pipe of some kind, is coming through the weapon because that really hurts when you get hit with it. And then there's limits on things like the bow I have cannot be more than 35 pounds at a 28 inch draw of pressure on it. And that's also for safety reasons. Then there's rules for any type of armor that you would like to wear. It has to be built to certain specifications. Uh, make, you need to make sure nobody can catch their hands in your armor. Nobody can cut themselves on it. Each weapon has its own, at least one of its own styles. Um, you know, there's sword and shield, Florentine, which is a weapon in each hand. Um, uh, what we call great weapon, um, so two-handed weapons. Um, there's a, the pole arm, which are even bigger than great weapons. Um, then there's archery. Um, and there's also um, a style called Peltast, which is just javelins. And then each of those has its own subsets um, based on whether or not you're right or left-handed, what kind of shield you use, where you like to fight in the line, um, lots, lots of different options. We do have weapons for, like group weapons for people that do show up and they want to fight. Then there's actual rules for the field play. And everyone has different areas they can be hit in. Anything that would be covered by a muscle shirt and a pair of uh, tidy whitey underwear is considered your torso, and that is a one-hit kill zone. Uh, anything from about your hip down to your foot is considered a leg. When you get hit with the leg, you take a knee. If you get hit in both of your legs, then you're dead. It'd be like if in real life, if you'd been chopped in both legs, you'd probably bleed out. So we have kind of a bleed out rule there. Uh, same if, for if you get hit in both arms, anything from your shoulder to your wrist is considered your arm. If your hand has a weapon in it, your hand is then considered part of the weapon. And if you get hit in the hand, it doesn't count anymore. As an arm strike, it has to be wrist or higher. And if you get hit in any combination of two limbs, so if I got an arm and a leg taken off, I would be dead as well. The rules are different for stabbing weapons. If I had gotten shot with an arrow in one arm and stabbed with a spear in my leg, those limbs are immobilized and I can't use them anymore, but I'm not dead because a stab wound is much smaller than being slashed. So when somebody takes a knee and then runs across the field on their knee pads, it's because they no longer have one of their legs. Our variant is called Belagarth and it's a little more fast paced than some of the other ones. A lot more physicality goes into it. We are the kind of line up uh, on two different sides of the field and collide in the middle with as many people as we can. We do mostly create the stuff ourselves. It's not too, uh, too terribly difficult to make, but there are places online that you can go to. Basically, it's a good excuse to come out here, uh, play a sport with other people, hit people with padded sticks. Um, it's a full contact, fast-paced sport um, recreating medieval combat. 